Hello people and welcome to episode 64, like the Nintendo or the Commodore. In this one the mods are heavy on the technical side, meaning stuff like new game mechanics, fixes, but also some flashy stuff too. And that's why I want you to do the following. First, get hyped. Second, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'm just kidding. Let's say this for the end of the review, but how about we make a little deal? If by the end of the video you should think it was complete useless garbage, then ok, feel free to dislike and forget about this channel. But if there is at least one mod which catches your interest and makes you consider adding it, you have to like and subscribe. How about that? Let's try it out. So, how about we do a little warm up this time, with a little texture mod. Ultra HD Apple Pies by Abiform. This mod replaces the Pi models with a high poly one and gives it high resolution textures. You can get them in 1K, 2K and 4K. It should be obvious which one we are looking at right now. Everything or nothing is our motto. Yeah, so those are some sexy realistic textures for sure. Looks freshly baked and... Oh no. Wait, let's get this straight. Those pies are exclusively for eating. It's been decades ago, but this damn American pie scene will probably haunt us for all eternity now. God damn it. But on the bright side, there is probably some even more disturbing stuff over at Lava's lab. Oh wait. Okay, we have another custom voice follower. A lot of them lately, but this one is... Well, yes, okay, let's take a look. Hiroko Takashiro follower by Izar Kun. Who can be found in the Blue Palace in Solitude? <laughs> yes, a Japanese custom voice. She's after all from... Can we please not talk about Bible Black? Don't get me wrong, I like to watch hentai just like any other upright citizen. But I prefer my women without any... Extra parts. Jesus, tap dancing Christ. Well, this follower had no outfit by default. Unfortunately, I'm happy to report, the anatomy seems to be in order. The outfit she is wearing here is the one from the recommended files, Choi Ji Yoon uniform by Kanji Stuff, plus the remodel from the optional file to make it look like in the anime. Anyway, Hiroko has a little unique recruitment dialogue plus the basic dialogue lines. She also mumbles some stuff about black magic from time to time. And also in combat she uses magic, obviously. With all the talk about black magic, I expected her to be a badass caster, but yeah, she got her ass kicked by that bandit pretty bad here. Well, her class is actually spell sword, so you should give her a weapon. Other than that, it's a nice custom voice follower. Question, do you like to hit where it hurts? If you answered yes, here's a mod for you, you sadistic fuck. Location damage by Filski. This combat mechanic is nothing new and is part of many big combat mods. So what is special about this one? First of all, it's really lightweight and should not burden your game with heavy scripts. It should also be compatible to almost every other combat mod because it uses no ASP. I only have action combat and deadly combat, but I tried using location damage with and without them, just to make sure everything works correct. Another significant thing about this mod is you can customize it freely by editing the INI located in the SKSE plugins folder. You can choose whether hitting a certain body part will deal damage to stamina or magicka alongside normal damage for example. You can apply effects like interrupt the current action, stagger, knockdown, disarm or even unequip the armor. Just imagine this. I hit this bitch so hard he flew out of his fucking armor. And you can also choose which location damage will be applied to NPCs and the player's character separately. And when I say NPCs, I mean all the creatures of course. The only difference is that some have different body parts to hit. So yes, some creatures actually don't have any body parts to hit. And another thing you can customize is the text displayed as you hit a certain body part. Boom, headshot, or whatever you think is cool. So yes, this mod is indeed very simple, but sounds like a lot of fun. 
The next mod is... <laughs> next we have a mod Mark Zuckerberg could sure use. Random Emotions by Cryomore. I didn't feel like reviewing this one at first, mainly because there was an insane amount of videos on this one. You know, all those wannabe YouTubers who would never think about reviewing or even showcasing anything which is even slightly connected with effort, and just try to cash in on the easy to show stuff. It seems for this mod all of them crawled out of their holes. And I can totally see why. All this mod does is adding random emotions to the player character's usually solid, expressionless face. Look at this. I just hit the fucking record button and that's it. I don't need to do anything here. This mod looks impressive and is really easy to show off. Of course, those emotions are random and might sometimes not fit the actual mood or current situation. Oh, so it's kinda like a Mass Effect Andromeda simulation mod! <laughs> yeah, I definitely need to actually play this game sometime. Ooh, the next mod brings back memories, because it's about dragons. Truly absorb dragon souls by Adventurer X. When was the last time you fought a dragon? I honestly can't remember when I did. This little mod here aims to make it more realistic, by giving you a little power-up every time you defeat a dragon and absorb its soul. Every dragon's soul is a little part of Hecator's power, and with this mod not just a means of unlocking new shouts, but also dynamically becoming stronger. Each soul will increase health, stamina, magicka, fairy weight, armor, resistance to non-physical damage, movement speed and shout cooldown a little bit. Increase in each of those stats is optional. During the installation you can select how many points each stat will increase exactly, that's what those numbers mean. So you can customize it to your liking. And all this is permanent, you won't lose those extra points when you spend those souls. It's a very simple concept, but it does sure go well with the lore. Definitely a nice idea. Next we have not a mod, but a fix for an in-game physics bug. SKSE Havoc Fix by Reezy. You know how physics mods sometimes tend to go batshit insane if you try to run your game with above 60 FPS. This is also why there is a limiter for that. Yeah, yeah, I know, those damn kids nowadays just wanna show off their pimped out monster rigs. Seriously, what kind of machine do you need to run a heavily modded Skyrim with more than 60 FPS? Well, my rig is not as beasty as I am, joke, but I was able to push it above 60 FPS. Indoors, in a small room. And look at this. The boobs were not impressed, but the HDT equipment started glitching. Problem is, I can't really tell you if this fix is working or not, because to be actually able to go beyond 60 FPS, I had to apply these changes to the Skyrim Ini, which I found on Reddit. I tried a couple of different methods, but this one was the only one that actually worked. However, using the fix together with these changes resulted in an infinite loading screen. In the comment section of the mod page, the author claimed that those changes are actually the same thing as the fix, except that it adds dynamic values. So I thought, aha, it's the same thing, they must conflict with one another. But as I ran the game with the fix only, my FPS were kept at 60 again. Wanna guess my reaction? What kind of bull is that? No idea. This one is beyond me. Alright, where are all the lore lovers among you? Step forward, the next mod is for you. Dragon Wall Wisdom Readable Dragon Walls by MorrowGoth35 Ever wondered what all the text on the Dragon Walls mean? Ever wished you could read it? Now you can. All the Dragon Walls of Skyrim, Dawnguard and Dragonborn are now readable. I mean, if you are a hardcore Skyrim fan, you shouldn't need it, right? The game has been out for so many years, by now you should be able to speak dragon fluently. I mean, this is certainly a way to display your fanship. Is this a word? You certainly know you are a hardcore fan when you start learning imaginary languages. Like, you know, there are for example those hardcore Lord of the Rings fans who can actually speak and read Quenya and Sindarin. Those are the most common elvish languages. Or those hardcore Star Trek fans who can speak Thligan Hall. That's the Klingon language. But yeah, if you just want to know what the walls say, get this mod. 
Okay, we finally get to the monster mods. Looks like some old friends decided to join the party. Aurorans by Mikhail. Those guys first appeared in Oblivion's Knights of the Nine DLC. Dedric warriors from Meridia's realm, who were led by Umaril the Unfeathered. Here in Skyrim you can find the most of them at Fort Dawnguard. They are non-hostile, of course. They join the Dawnguard as just warriors to help in the fight against the vampires. In combat they use various light based attacks, but not all of them are good guys. There are also the corrupt Aurorans. They look the same, however. I actually expected them to be less glowy, maybe have a dark aura instead. So you can find them and get their shiny weapons for yourself. There are also summon spellbooks for all the different kinds of Aurorans you can encounter. And folks, this is actually the only mod this time. This might actually be a good sign. Maybe Mikhail is working on something big again. Because seriously, Mikhail, friend, I love your monster mods, I really do. But it would be cooler if you would make more new lands and quest mods, like in the past. Sure, it's much harder, but they are also much more epic and memorable. One way or another, always looking forward to more of your work. So, weapons and armors time now. Also check this out, I got JK Skyrim light, because when I tried the normal one, my FPS dropped to 30 and sometimes even below in certain places. But anyways, let's see what we can add to our arsenal this time. Grimdall by Cleavesy Moon. This is a very basic looking sword, plain and simple, nothing too flashy. The shape reminds a little bit on the Dwarven weaponry, it's an okay weapon for what it is. But the next weapon is something you don't see every day. Unless you work in a bakery. La Baguette Magique by Isha. Oui, oui, c'est une très intéressante modification. Et vraiment appétissant aussi. God, I hate French. But I don't want to hear anything about this mod being unrealistic. Have you ever tried eating a weak old baguette? I swear it becomes harder than any metal. Also, I'm sure nobody ever said beating up Heimskar with a baguette is no fun. And it seems so sharp too. Took his head clean off. The perfect weapon. Okay, okay, fine. Let's get to the next mod. In terms of armors, I only have this. It's a real oak shield, another mod by Funky Candle Cat. And also another Dark Souls inspired item. And that also means it has a Dark Souls like upgrade system again with the pluses. A very nice big shield, looks really protective and sturdy. Good stuff. So, we have a quest mod, and judging by the name, I have the feeling the world needs saving once again. The Dark World by Morrowind 1979. This is a new lens mod with a quest line. Sounds good to me. To start we need to read this journal on the top floor of the Drunken Huntsman. Yeah, somebody opened a gate to somewhere with evil stuff inside. So we go to this excavation site. Turns out to be a regular looking mine, nothing special. But then all of a sudden they expect us to think. There are pickaxes laying around and a wall with a weird texture. So what do we do? Next is another vanilla looking dungeon. Only that there is some weird purple stuff sometimes. But then there's the next surprise. Silence, little mortal. You will answer my riddle. Answer true and you will be rewarded. Answer false and I will condemn your soul to the void. Skeletor is fully voiced and talkative, and after we deal with his very hard riddle, we finally get to see the new world space. The Light Dwellers have come, but this is the Kingdom of Unlight. This is the Kingdom of Darkness. Well, well, we do not look very impressed now, do we? This random expression mod really pays off. Also, what the heck is going on here? The Deceiver will enslave your world. He will enslave all worlds. Yes, yes, some big bad dude wants to do some bad stuff and we have to find the six Dragon Balls to stop him. But the question is, are you ready for the next surprise? He is weak. Kill him. Rend his flesh. Grind his bones. We get to decide his fate? Yeah, sure, why not? 
Um, I wouldn't have put it better myself. But anyways, what is going on with this place? The dark world, huh? More like the flat world. This place, however, is not small at all. Check this out. A lot of ground to cover. So, here are the pros and cons of this mod. Cons. The world looks really flat, and there are many empty places. It also becomes repetitive fast. Some locations were really partially copy-pasted. The pros, however, the dungeons are really big and deliver a nice atmosphere. The enemies look cool and do provide a challenge. The voice acting is badass. And there is some interesting good versus evil stuff going on. Might even be a different ending. So, if you want a big new adventure and don't mind the occasional repetitiveness, this mod will certainly do the trick. And this is it for this episode. So, did you make a deal with the devil at the beginning of the episode? Well then, links all mods are in the description below. Don't forget to enjoy the mods you like. And if you enjoyed this review, hit the like button and subscribe for more. I thank you all for watching and see you around.